Hello, it's MJ and today I have another voiceover video for you. I got some questions about how I made the log cabin build that I shared a little while ago, so I thought I would do a quick tutorial about it. And the reason you're getting a voiceover is because I could have just put some royalty free music under a, a time lapse of me building, but I wanted to give some context for certain parts. I mean, you could still watch this without sound and just see what I'm doing, but talking over it will give me the opportunity to give some context, uh, especially for the parts where I mess up and have to redo my own work in my own tutorial, because that does happen. You know, it's it's part of building in Fallout 76 and all of us who make building videos probably at least like the building more than we hate the frustrating bits or we would stop doing it, I guess. See? Context. Anyway, this is not a super complicated build, to be honest. I did use some blueprinting shenanigans, some floating, some flame tapping and some merging but none of it in crazy amounts. Although if you don't have catwalks, you might not be able to build this base. You might be able to blueprint the one and a half floor setup from somewhere that should place down without problems. The biggest challenge in this build is not even really going to come up for this tutorial, which is where to put the fireplace to start the build. Because the little plot of land on the other side of this bridge only really has space for two foundations wide and that the fireplace is 2.5. Uh, this just required a bunch of trial and error putting down the fireplace foundations and then seeing if I could build the rest of the first floor around it, if not delete everything and try a different spot for the fireplace. So if you want to build this house here, that's what it's going to come down to. Just keep trying until it fits. I, I promise you, as you can see from my build, it is possible. To find this location on the map, just go to Lakeside Cabins and then up the hill to the west. Um, you'll run into this little bridge soon enough. If you do build here, be aware that you will get the quest to take over the workshop nearby almost every time you travel back home. And if someone else already owns it, attacking mobs will take potshots at your camp, which... rude. So since I already did a tour of this build, I won't bore you with another one. I'll just do a quick reminder. We've got a downstairs with a little kitchen area, a fireplace and living area, and a workshop in the back. Then up the stairs, okay. we have a cozy little relaxing area, the bedroom and bathroom. And Commander de Guerre, who enjoys taking showers, like a lot. Like, maybe to an unhealthy degree and she might need to see someone about that. This tree in my bathroom is also not supposed to be here. I think it got bulldozed when I built it originally, but sometimes when I load in, the game still thinks it should be there. It's, it's fine, just ignore it until it goes away. I do have to mention that these tall windows in the bedroom area are maybe my favorite bit of the build. They are perfect for lying in bed and watching the stars. If only I hadn't put the bed such that the sleeping animation faces the wall. Okay, so time to build. I'm at a different camp slot now, one that had enough budget space to build a whole nother building in it. Uh, ignore the building to the left, that's going to be its own video someday. The cabin's footprint is 2x4 foundations, with a half space sticking out for the fireplace slash cubby to hide the stairs that are holding up the upper floor. To build that, I used a trick I learned from Mr. Church. I'm not sure whether he was the first one to figure this out, but he's the one I got this from, so he gets the shout out. I'll link the video below. I use this blueprint, which I'll show how to make in a second. Basically, you've got these two foundations spaced half a foundation apart, with a wall facing towards the foundation on the right. What this does is it places the foundation on the right wherever you put it, and then the foundation on the left will snap to the wall, glitching inside the other foundation. And voila, you have a 1.5 floor foundation. The wall can be removed after placing or kept, it was just there to snap the foundation. To build the blueprint, just put down two foundations next to each other and add a wall on the inner edge of the right foundation so that the outside of the wall is facing left. Then remove the right foundation and in its place put a half catwalk. Add a foundation to that and remove the catwalk. A blueprint this, give it a um, catchy name and use it to your heart's content. Now onto the floating floor. Uh, first put down a hovel on the edge of the 1.5 floor piece that's sticking out and flame trap it. If you don't do this now, you'll have to remove anything you do after this because it won't place down once the stairs are in and the stairs won't delete until the upper floors are not floating, but floating the floors is the entire point, so put this down now. After it's been burned to a crisp, put the stairs on the edge as well and snap a floor to the stairs. Then remove the first two foundations on the right side because the stairs we're going to put there will not place if there's foundations in the way. Back upstairs, build a little structure out of catwalks like this and snap the stairs to it going down. 
The catwalks can be removed now, so that will give us our stairs against the side wall. Don't forget to put your foundations back, and if you care about the direction of your floors, make sure they're facing the right way. Now, enjoy me messing up here. I'm adding the rest of the upper floors, but I'm forgetting to offset them to account for the extra half floor downstairs, which led to me wondering later on why the walls wouldn't line up, and then cursing myself for having to redo all of this. So uh, let's not linger on that and cut to when I fix it instead. There, now we have a proper upper floor, and the most, shall we say, risky part of the build is done. Go ahead and repair that little half wall and get some walls around the ground floor and the cubby that's going to be the fireplace. Upstairs we're going to build from the front to the back and I'll be honest, most of this went down a lot easier than I remembered from the original build. Maybe that's because they changed something in the building rules that actually made things easier for once or maybe I just built things in a different order the first time and unwittingly made things harder for myself. But anyway, after we've built these roofs and some walls towards the back of the house, we can build up the second floor fireplace. I used half walls first, then changed my mind and used full walls. Either way, the glass wall pieces just snap into it, no problem. The fireplace roof, that is where the trouble is going to be. Just build the rest of the walls first and then we'll focus on the fireplace. First we're going to add a wall to snap the fireplace door into, but for that we need to destroy the roof that's coming down there. A flamethrower on two stash boxes should do the trick. Also, don't be like me and repair the roof once the wall is on, that's way too soon, you'll see why in a minute. To place the wall with the brick facing outwards, first we're going to have to put down the wall downstairs, where there's a foundation to help it face the right way. After that, you can just snap another wall on top and add your fireplace doors. I do absolutely love using this style pattern on the half walls sticking out under the fireplace, it just looks mm, so good. Expect to see this in a bunch of my camps going forward. All right, back to the fireplace. I'm trying to put a roof piece on it, not realizing that it's the roof I repaired earlier that's blocking it. So I'm trying to destroy the walls around it and none of that is working until I finally figured out that it might be the roof. And there we go, the roof goes on now. So if you build this, just don't repair that roof piece until you're done with most everything else. It'll save you a bunch of time. Anyway, now we can finish up the rest, which is more or less just roof pieces and some double walls for the bathroom and workshop. In the bathroom, make sure to use the brick walls for the upper triangle pieces or the metal pieces I think work too, because for some reason the other wall types want a double wall. Just flame trap the heck out of it, add your double walls and repair. Then repeat the double walls downstairs, only this time without the flame trapping. Lastly, add a porch to the back. And here we are, that's it, that's the build. Decorate this to your heart's content. I'm not going to, not for this video, though I'll show a couple little tricks I used throughout my decor and which I use in most of my builds. Oh yeah, the basic stairs on the side do stick out through the wall a bit, but not all of the stairs do this, so just find a version that doesn't really show through. I think I use the Nuka Cola stairs. As to the decor, the upstairs lounge does need some kind of railing. I played around with a couple different things. You could use whatever you like, of course. I tried these stacked benches first, but I didn't like that I couldn't put them as close to the edge as I wanted. It might work if you're willing to remove the roofs and hope you'll be able to place them back, or if you figure out the railing you want earlier on in the build and put it down before you place the roofs. At this far in a build, I'm always hesitant to remove things just because of the amount of effort I've already put in, but sometimes taking apart half your house just to to get a certain decor item to do what you want is just what you have to do. Anyway, I settled on these side tables, which don't really even require any tricks. They just slide into each other a bit. It's easy peasy. Is this cheating? It, it kind of feels like it. I'll show you a quick bit of merging too. I like to merge my sinks into cabinets, for example, so I've made a blueprint of my favorite combo. This won't place down merged, but at least it has the right alignment, so I just need to plonk it down onto a pressure plate, merge it down as far as I want to go. Though the legs of the sink do tend to stick through upper floors if you go too far, so be careful with that. I also merge my power into stash boxes because I loathe the look of power cables running through my camp. My favorite stash box to use for this is the green travel trunk, though it's slightly too small. You can sink the generator down far enough that those metal straps on the top don't show. And on a foundation it's fine, but if you want to place this on an upper floor, keep in mind that the bottom of the generator will be somewhat visible from below. While I was at it, I also tried the new Metal Alien stash box, which I hadn't used before, and that one works very well too. So, you know, go nuts with this, I guess. You can put generators wherever you like in your camp, and no one will know. 
So there we have it. Oh, oh yeah, porches. I did originally envision the porch in the front, but it just wasn't going to happen with where I was able to put the fireplace. There just wasn't enough room in the front at my original location. And actually rebuilding this here, I'm not so sure a porch in front is a good idea. It's, it's kind of too much with all the different levels this build already has. If you have the space, adding some foundations to the front as a little patio could work, but you can easily do without. And I guess that's it. I enjoy this somewhat archy shot of my character through some grass and if you build a cabin like this anywhere let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching, bye!